This is how Jinping Mei is read. Chapter 11 In the embroidered portrait version, Pan Jinlian beats Sun Tzu hard, and Simon King combs the cage with sisterly Gui poem and story version. Pan Jinlian beats Sun Tzu hard, and Simon King combs the cage with sisterly Gui. 1. The Sarajevo Incident of Struggle for Favor 2.0 In the previous article, we analyzed the favor map in version 1.0 and version 2.0 in detail, not only to observe the division of power among the wives and concubines of the Zyman family, but also because the map is dynamic, with changes in strength and weakness, and wars may break out at any time to form a new map. Therefore, before Li Pinger appeared, the author ranged a battle for favor in the pre-Li Pinger era, that is, the favor map version 2.0. Just like Germany, Pan Jinlian is the protagonist in almost every war, and the trigger for the first battle for favor, that is, the Sarajevo incident, originated from two little people Sun Tzu-e and Chun Mai, who is Sun Tzu-e in the first 10 episodes, we barely had any impression of her. We only know that she is the dowry girl of Simon King's first wife Chen, and was upgraded to a concubine by Simon King in the 2.0 version. Dairy girl does not mean marrying the girl. The common room means that the maid's bedroom is connected with the master's bedroom. And she must serve the master at any time, including the master's sexual life. Pinger and Zyron in a dream of red mansions, Chun Mai and Pan Jin Lian's room, and Ying Shun and Li Pinger's room are all girls from the same house, compared with Tong Feng. Dairy girls are of a lower level. They may be used by their masters, but they may also just be used. As a dowry girl who lost her mistress, Sun Tzu was promoted to a concubine after being adopted by Simon King. She lived in three rooms and was also in charge of the kitchen, compared with her original situation. It can be said that it was quite improved. However, the problem lies precisely here. She thinks that she should be a concubine. The fourth mother of the Simon family, in fact, others never see it that way. Sun Tzu is stupid, her nominal status is coupled with an uneasy heart. On the one hand, she has an empty sense of superiority, and on the other hand, she has a heavy sense of inferiority. She no longer wants to see everything she once had with the eyes of a slave, but the environment did not allow her to see her life today through her master's eyes, so she became unbalanced. It was at this time that she met the nemesis of her life, Chan Mai. The Sarajevo incident goes like this, Pan Jin Lian scolded Chun Mai for some trivial matters. Chun Mai was in a bad mood and had a tantrum in the kitchen. Sun Tzu -e, who was in charge of the kitchen, pretended to tease him and said, If you think about men, think elsewhere. Why are you so stubborn here? Chun Mai got angry. That crooked man is teasing me. Chun Mai went back and told Pan Jin Lian. He also said that my mother-in-law took me in, and she coaxed the men together. She knew about the instigation and Jin Lian. Jinlian was very unhappy. The so-called pretend to tease him is nothing more than ridicule. However, Sun Zui never expected that such a casual joke would offend Pan Jinlian, who was at the height of her power. This is really a butterfly fluttering its wings in Latin America. A hurricane occurred in the Caribbean. The assassination of Archduke Ferdinand in Sarajevo triggered the First World War. In the world of Jinping Mei, Sun Tzu's so-called missing a man is really not an important joke. But it is just the right moment. Miss Chun Mai is in a bad mood. More importantly, Chun Mai has always disliked Sun Tzu. -ay. According to Sun Tzu, -ay, when Chun Mai was in Wu Yunyang's room, she was unhappy and hit her with the back of a knife. The reason is very simple. Chun Mai is a little girl, a slave. Sun Tzu is a big girl, still employed, a concubine, a fourth mother, and a master. It is for this reason that Chun Mai is deeply dissatisfied for beating her with the back of a knife. She was also adopted by her master a few days ago. Now the difference between her and Sun Zue is only one rank, but those things she has more must show up. What are the spring plums? She is younger, more beautiful, and more favored by Simon King, which is the first level. She has Pan Jin Lian as a big backing and currently has a good relationship with Wu Yunyang, which is the second level. She is very smart, with both IQ and EQ. Very high, this is the third level. In this regard, Sun Zue simply pales in comparison. So, a joke became Chan Mei's excuse for revenge. 
She told Pan Jinlian in a sarcastic way that the so-called Kiao Gang were, on the one hand, bringing the flames of war to Pan Jinlian, and on the other hand, they were using Sun Zue's mouth to promote her new identity. And Simon knew her from then on. The family should know that this is no longer the little girl who let mermaids eat meat. But Miss Chun Mai, perhaps, Chun Mai has been waiting for this day for too long. Now the question is, what does Pan Jinlian think of this matter? She found an excuse to start a favor war, but she wisely held her ground. She began to analyze the opponent's situation in version 2.0 of the battle for favor. Wu Yunyoung is still very friendly now. While Li Jiar, who seems to be very low-key, seems to be ready to exert force, but he should be able to deal with it. But what is her attitude towards the new beautiful and beautiful Meng Yulu who has not spoken yet? 2. Garden Beauty Gang Regarding this matter, we have to start with the garden. The structure of the Zimon family's house is as follows. Wu Yunyang, Li Jiar, Meng Yulu, and Sun Zue live in the back, which is the main room, and Pan Jinlian lives in the front garden. There are three rooms in the garden, and there are corner doors connected to the back. Later, when Li Pinger moved into Zimon's house, he bought the flower house that was adjacent to the garden and turned it into a large garden. Li Pinger was equivalent to living in the garden. Under normal circumstances, we readers do not pay much attention to these spatial layouts. If you have been to J1 in Yangzhou, you will probably have a deep impression. J1 was originally a salt merchant's house and is divided into two parts, the garden and the residence. The garden is designed with rockeries, bamboo groves, ponds, etc. According to the scenery of spring, summer, autumn and winter, the buildings are placed according to the scenery and the scenery takes advantage of the buildings. The streets are connected and winding everywhere, the path leads to a quiet place. The residences are neatly built and neatly ranged. In other words, the house is regulated and the garden is free. Referring to a dream of red mansions and the peony pavilion, for ancient women who did not go out or step outside the door, and for aristocratic ladies who could not easily leave the boo door and attic. The garden was not easy either. Where to get involved? Because of this, the garden seems to have become a special case outside of secular ethical life. For example, the peony pavilion takes place in a garden, and a dream of red mansions depicts the grand view garden as the kingdom of youth. Of course, beauty and youth will be here, as will lust and lust. It was in the garden that Du Linying dreamed of Liu Meng Mai and it was in the garden that the silly elder sister picked up the embroidered sachet. In Jinping Mei, it is not easy for serious women like Wu Yunyang to set foot in the garden. It is also difficult for unfavored women like Li Jiar and Sun Sue to enter the garden. Those who live in the garden are whores in their eyes, and Pan Jinlian, Li Pinger, Chan Mai. The one who loves to go to the garden is Meng Yulu, who still has youthful dreams and enthusiasm for life. Even most of the sex scenes in Zimon's family and Jin Ping may take place in the garden, including Jin, Ping, Mei, and even Song Wilian. Following the first mention of the garden in the last chapter, this chapter officially begins the story of the garden. Here, I put forward a concept, the Garden Beauty Gang. In a narrow sense, this beauty gang is Meng Yulu, Pen Jinlian, and Li Pinger. In a broad sense, it also includes Chun Mai, Yingchen, and others. They will let's perform the very enchanting and interesting garden story Jinping made together. Next, let's first look at the first garden meeting between two beauties, Meng and Pan. Of course, their meeting was closely related to the Sarajevo incident of Chen Mai and Sun Zue. It can be said to be an upgraded version of the incident. First, Pan Jinlian was a little unhappy and felt depressed in the pavilion. Then Meng Yulu came and her greeting to Pan Jinlian was sister. Why are you so depressed and silent? Pan Jinlian asked her where she was from. When she found out that Meng was coming from the kitchen, she asked her if she heard anything. Obviously, the implication was whether he heard what Sun Zue said. Meng Yulu's answer was very light. Sister, I have no words. Since Meng Yulu didn't say anything, Pan Jinlian also shut up. There are two no words here. The dialogue seems plain and uninteresting, but in fact it is full of undercurrents. First of all, why did Meng Yulu go to the kitchen when he had nothing to do? If she needs anything, 
She can just ask the girl to go to the kitchen and say something. Ben Hui Chen Mai went to quarrel on Pan Jinlian's behalf, and Pan Jinlian didn't know how to go to the kitchen by herself. Therefore, she could only go to the kitchen for one reason. She heard some gossip and went to the kitchen to gossip. Secondly, is Sun Zue really speechless? I think that's definitely not the case. After Sun Zue was beaten by Simon King, Sun complained to others before Simon King could move forward. This complaint was even heard by Simon King. How could she not complain to the popular San Yang? Thirdly, if Sun Zue was really speechless, then why did Meng Yulu go to the garden to find Pan Jin Lian? If Sun Zue said something, would Meng Yulu just come to watch the fun? Since Pan Jin Lian herself refused to reveal why she was selling, Meng Yulu naturally refused to reveal what she heard easily. Because informing or inciting when the strength of the power vying for favor is unknown may be detrimental to her. Since everything looks fine on the surface, let's continue to be fine. The two people, who were probably hating and fearing each other, reached a temporary compromise because of the threat of the old man and their new rival. They worked together in the garden, drank tea, and played Go until Simon King came back. Simon King felt extremely happy when he saw such an elegant beauty in the romantic garden. His way of expressing it was, it looks like a pair of pink hair, but it is also worth a hundred and ten tails of silver. Bantu is a prostitute, and Simon King actually uses prostitutes as a metaphor for his own woman, which is really rude. However, it was also endearingly rude, and to him, this was probably a sincere compliment. In this regard, Pan Jin Lian was still reluctant. She couldn't help but continue to ridicule Li Jiar. You have fans behind you. Meng Yulu was probably very sad and left back. How could a dignified wealthy businessman's wife marry a rogue concubine and compare herself to a prostitute? Next, the three of them played Go. And Pan Jin Lian lost. Simon King threw the pieces into chaos before he even counted the pieces. Although it is not mentioned, it is conceivable that Pan Jin Lian's chess skills are not very good, but it does not matter. Because the chess pieces here are the key, it is said that in the past, Emperor Ming of the Tang Dynasty played chess with his ministers. And concubine Yang saw that the emperor's husband lost the chess game, just let the cat mess up the chess game. Obviously, what is revealed here is a similar intelligence and cunning. Even this is not enough. After the chess was played, they also lost. Meng Yulu didn't move, but Pan Jinlian ran away. So, the beauty runs, the man chases her, she smiles, the man hugs her, and even crushes the petals and sprinkles them all over her body. It is really a spring garden beauty picture. As the saying goes, everything is suitable for painting. However, behind this beautiful scene that has been described countless times by classical poems and even classical paintings, there is a very realistic continuation. Simon King walked forward, hugged him in a pun, and pressed him against the lake and mountain, spitting out cloves and making his tongue melt. Spit. Let's make a joke. You know, if you didn't think about it, if Meng Yulu hadn't appeared and Wu Yunyang had not come back, there would have been a lot of passion. Wu Yunyang came back, and Meng Yulu and Pan Jinlian went to the room to report and say hello. They didn't say anything, but Wu Yunyang's first sentence was, Why are you laughing? It can be imagined that the two of them went in with a smile, since they were laughing. They would definitely not laugh for no reason. Then the two people before people definitely whisper a little bit. What does this say? I guess it goes like this. Meng Yulu said to Pan Jinlian, Look at you, to perverts, making trouble in the garden in broad daylight. Fortunately, I came here first. If the ant saw it, or some little boy saw it, and I'm so embarrassed. Pan Jin Lian probably smiled sheepishly no need to explain, no need to argue, because the other party is not sarcastic, so he is not an opponent. When Wu Yun Yang saw them laughing, she asked casually, Pan Jin Lian didn't say anything, and Meng Yulu only said that he had lost in the chess game, and was treating them, thus covering up the romantic affair. Obviously, through this episode, the smart Pan Jin Lian has understood it. Although Meng Yulu did not clearly indicate who she would stand with later facts prove that, in most conflicts, 
Meng Yulu would stand with Pan Jinlian aside, but at least this tacit understanding let her know that Meng Yulu will not compete with her for a man at present, nor will he oppose her for this. At this time, she began to make up her mind to deal with Sun Zue. 3. Simon's First Battle The war for favor is about to officially begin, and the two warring parties are Pan Jinlian, Chen Mai and Sun Zue. It would be unfair to say that the fight had officially started. Chen Mai had been planning for a long time, Pan Jinlian was also full of fighting spirit, but Sun Zue was kept in the dark. But who made her stupid? Who made her be too late and insensitive to the battle for favor? Pan Jinlian is smart enough, too smart to be smarter. She wanted to deal with Sun Zue, but she was not willing to have a head-on conflict with her at all. Fighting and killing was the job of the gangsters in the market. The real master was to coerce the emperor and command the princess. On this day, Simon King woke up from a night of having sex with Pan Jinlian and opened his mouth to eat lotus, cake and silver bream soup. This cake probably requires some fresh lotus petals to be used as ingredients, which is certainly not easy in a short time. And this soup, just by looking at the name, you can tell how difficult it is. Therefore, the unlucky Sun Zue, as a kitchen manager, encountered such a difficult task and couldn't do it well for a long time. Wu Nying's room first sent Qiu Ju to urge her, and then Chun Mei to urge her. The stupid Sun Zue thought that when Qiu Ju came, she was Qiu Ju, and when Chun Mai came, she was Chun Mai. She thought that Chun Mai came to have trouble with herself. She never saw that behind the fox was the tiger, and behind the tiger was her god, Simon King. So her scolding was spread to the ears of Pan Jinlian and Simon King by Chan Mai, which made Simon King angry. And he rushed over and kicked her a few times. Forget it, the sluggish Sun Tzu still complained loudly to Simon King. At this time, causing him to come back and receive a few more punches. The beating made her so angry that she burst into tears and cried loudly in the kitchen. She was sad enough, but she didn't even understand why she was beaten. Next, the ignorant Sun Tzu complained to Wu Yunyang and Li Jiar, and scolded Pan Jinlian and Chan Mai behind their backs. The themes of this scolding were poisoning men and conniving accommodating Chan Mai. Forget everything else. Is this okay? Who doesn't know that Simon King is the main culprit in these two incidents? To say that Pan Jinlian is wrong is to say that Simon King is wrong. So, with Pan Jinlian's pale face and tearful eyes on her pillow, the miserable Sun Zue was beaten for the third time in one day. I picked her hair and hit her with a short stick as hard as I could. The first war inversion to point zero of the battle for favor map has ended, and Sun Zue probably already knows why she was beaten. And Pan Jinlian tasted the victory of pillow style for the first time. She, who was humiliated and pitiful, won a great victory. Not only did she get a night of spring breeze from Simon King, but she also got for tales of beads. Comfort V. 4. The plum blossoms are less white than the snow, but the snow is less fragrant than the plum blossoms. In fact, no matter what stage of the competition for favor, Chun Mai and Sun Zue are only marginal characters. However, they have brought up a very important topic, which will be of great help to us in the future when we observe the personalities or relationships of other characters. In the quarrel between Sun Zue, Chun Mai and Pan Jinlian, the core of this issue was highlighted, the status of slaves. Sun Zue thinks Chun Mai is a slave. She used to hit her with the back of a knife. Master and slave, Chang Yuan is so stubborn, sometimes, he says. The master was referring to Pan Jinlian, and the slave was naturally referring to Chun Mai. Chun Mai knows that she is still a slave, but she refuses to admit her status as a slave. I didn't say, dad is waiting in front. Why didn't you go? But the people in the small courtyard referring to Sun Zue, Jin Nukai and Wan Nukai scolded me. Her subtext is, I am no longer an ordinary slave. I have been used by the master. Pan Jinlian believed that although Sun Zue was adopted as a concubine, she was still nothing more than a slave. Later when the scolding started, Zue said, you referring to Pan Jinlian called me a slave. You are a real slave. So, the most important point. What does Simon King think? You call him a slave. Why don't you take pictures of your own house by soaking in urine? This you is Sun Zue, and he is Chan Mai. In Simon King's eyes, 
Sun Zue, indeed as Pan Jin Lian saw, was still a slave, and far inferior to Chun Mei. It is true that Sun Zue has been adopted, and it is true that she has the system of a concubine. But Chun Mei has also been adopted, and she is younger, more beautiful and smarter. And the master who loves her now feels that she is incompetent. She, owe her some status. Sun Zue didn't realize this at all, which led to the tragic fate of her life. Who would have known that this former slave would hate her all her life? Just for doing something that seemed inconspicuous to outsiders. From the names and fates of these two characters, I think the author probably has a little bit of interest in writing. Plum plums are as white as snow, but snow is less fragrant than plum blossoms. Everyone should know themselves correctly and respect others. Perhaps when we read novels, we often put ourselves into the protagonist. For example, we will be entangled in whether we should choose Lin Daiyu or Zhu Bao Chai. However, for readers of Jin Ping Mei, my suggestion is not to be too entangled in whether you should sympathize with Sun Zue or care about Chan Mai. Sometimes you should think about real life. Many times, we are just one of two roles, Sun Zue doesn't. Understand that she is still a slave in the eyes of others, and she doesn't want to be one. Chan Mai knows that she is still a slave in the eyes of others, and she also knows that she is still a slave in the eyes of others. A chance to no longer be a slave. If there is any inspiration from this story, what I want to say is, if you want to live well now, the key is to understand how others see yourself. If you want to live well in the future, the key is how you see yourself. 5. A ruthless character outside the territory of fighting for favor. Sister Li Gui, who lay deep foreshadowing in the first chapter of the portrait, finally makes her debut this time. Sister Li Gui is the leading prostitute in Jinping Mei, and she is seduced by Ximen King this time. Combing cage, a professional term, means the first time a prostitute picks up clients. Thinking about it with the soles of your feet. This shouldn't be cheap, right? Take a look at Sister Li Gui's press. Simon Sing sends the boy to go home to get 50 tails of silver and ask for four pieces of clothes in Duane's shop to comb Sister Gui. 50 tails of silver and four pieces of clothing are just a comb basket. What does Chun Mai, who bought it for 16 tails of silver, think? What do you think of Xiao Yu, who was bought for five tails of silver? Compared with being acquired, the fate of the comb cage seems to be much better. Of course, prostitutes have the miserable side of prostitutes. Let's leave this aside for now. Let's take a look at some of the interesting stories about Simon King's prostitution. On this day, wine was served at Hua Zixu's house, and the happiness of the ten brothers was described here. At the banquet, Sister Li Gui made Simon King fall in love at first sight with her amazing beauty and gorgeous. Singing, she was so confused that she delivered the goods to her door in person. Then, Simon King took Earl Ying and Si Zida into the Li family brothel, and Li Gui and his sister drank with them. Simon King was interested in Sister Li Gui, so he asked her to sing. Her anxious look was seen through by the experienced prostitutes, so Sister Li Gui made a pretentious statement. She has been raised coquettishly since she was a child, and she has been shy since she was born. She refuses to talk to others. People sing randomly. Simon King had no choice but to give five tails of silver to buy the next song, Be Havocumly, overcome all the hooks and gain the upper hand. The fragrance of your actions brings you admiration and admiration from time to time. Wow, how can there be mediocrity in the mud of Jade Pestle? A song from the palace merchants, all the people in the house were shocked. Better than King Xiong in a dream, better than Xiong Wang Yi is in a dream. This is the style of the famous prostitute in Jinping Mei. Can Simon King not be fascinated by overwhelming all the hooks and gaining the upper hand and a song from the palace merchants? That shocked everyone in the house. Better than King Zhang's dream, the wind and moon are boundless, not in bed, but better than in bed. How could Simon King not be fascinated by this talent? So there was the 50 tail comb cage mentioned above. From then on, Sister Li Gui played an important role and often wandered around the Simon family. She did not participate in the battle for favor, but she had a very important influence on the battle for favor. You must know that she is Li Zhao's niece in ancient times. The government managed brothels according to special household registration. 
but prostitutes are mostly sold from poor families, so the kinship relationship may only represent the seniority in the industry, which may not be true. However, for the sake of convenience, this book will always use kinship relationships. This Ligiar, when she heard that her husband was going to prostitute her niece, she actually gave her a gift of 50 tails of silver. All right, this part of the story ends here. Want to know what happened next? Let's listen to the breakdown next time.